Afternoon, man. Afternoon. This is my first video in about, geez, I want to say two months, at least two months. It's been a, it's been a while. Like I gotta get back even used to even talking on camera. Like doing videos, and before I get started, doing videos is like exercising. You, if you ever get used to doing it, you get real good at it. But once you ever stop doing it, you have to relearn how to do it. But you know, it's a process that I'm used to dealing with. But again, welcome back to the Outlet Podcast. And I'm surprised that I still have more shit to talk about at this point. You know, I reached a point where I got tired of talking about people. I got tired of talking about the same old points because I felt like I was repeating myself, like on everything. Like I'm in this midst of wanting to build a business. Like I want to, I just don't know what I'm really passionate about. And it seems the only thing I'm really passionate about that I thought would change over time is me talking shit on this camera. This is something I would still love to do. And I thought that would, you know, kind of waver. But anyway, right? Not to drag out a you know an intro too long. It's been a while, so excuse me. This one's a bit choppy. I'm just speaking from off the top of my head. I'm gonna call this one the biggest loser, and the reason why I say that, you know, I just got back home from working this job that I've been on for eight fucking months. Good God Almighty! I never want to do no shit like that again. And um. I'm in a good position in life, man. But at the same time, it's like, I've only been really rich, I consider rich, two times in my whole life, two times. The first time was when I got the Navy. They handed me $20,000. Now again, $20,000 ain't a lot of money. Know what I'm saying? Whatever, right? The second time was when I left this job. I had, let's see. When I left this job, I think I had about fifteen, fourteen thousand dollars saved. Know what I'm saying? And I still am sitting on a good chunk of money. Like that's not me talking shit, but it just reminds me of all the times when I, you know, got shortchanged and shortcutted, and you know, took losses and shit. And I'm still kind of thinking like, fuck them times. <laughs> yeah, you thought I'd be like, well, well, look, the shit was worth it. And no, fuck them times. I don't miss that shit. I don't feel no different about it. Fuck that shit. But it's like, if you was to ask me what my biggest asset is to this day, at 31 years old, I would say it's the fact that I'm so resilient. Because, boy, I've taken hella losses over life. Like, <laughs> As anybody, you live long enough, you take enough losses. If you if you breathe air long enough on this planet, you're gonna take a lot of losses and shit, mate. I remember, and I'm just really just speaking in general. I don't know how to package this shit just yet, but I remember one time, this had to be, I think last year, I got cut out of a thousand dollars because of another motherfucker. And I, I never forget how mad I was about the shit. I was living. So I'm on this job when I'm in Philadelphia, the job was like two weeks long. You know what I'm saying? But they ain't cut me yet. You know what I'm saying? They usually, what they do with nuclear plant work, they put out a list of, you know, people they finna cut loose on the first list. I wasn't on the first list. You know what I'm saying? Cause I done been to this plant two or three times. So they know me, but there was another person that was on the list. So basically what happened was this person knew some people at the job, basically went and talked to somebody and got me laid off, you know what I'm saying? I was like, damn, like, I was supposed to work Monday, Tuesday, that Wednesday, got laid off that Thursday. I ended up getting laid off that Monday morning. In nuclear world, you make so much money within a short period of time. Three days on the job cost me $1,000. To why somebody was pissed, pissed, pissed. Like, I've suffered my uh, suffered. I've suffered my share of losses and shit, man. Like, for me to be in a position now where it's like I just came off vacation. Oh my god, it was a great vacation. But in the midst of that vacation, I learned something about myself. I was like, damn, all this work I've been doing to make this money on this job, I had to sacrifice my fitness. I went running this morning for the first time in about five months. Five months, and you, man, I'm telling you. 
I'm trying to really stay on top of my fitness. I'm just, this is all just an update of what's going on with me right now. But I'm saying like, I've lost a lot of stuff in the midst of me gaining. Like, what was it? Last year, my arm, which I'm still really pissed about that to a certain extent, but I'm trying, I'm learning to live with it. But you know, even in that instance, it's like, I, it wasn't like I fist fought somebody and lost. It's like, I got blindsided. Like, that's the same way it's been since I've been down here in Southeast Georgia since I've been back. It's always, anytime any I've ever gotten into it with somebody, it's never like no straight up, you know, issue. It's always like I catch the blind side shit. Like, motherfuckers want to jump me and shit. Like, it's, it's always stupid shit. And it's like, it gets me to the point where it's like, damn, man, life really ain't fair. Like, it's a quote, it's a quote I'm going to use. And a friend of mine, a really, really, really good friend of mine said it to me you know and, and this one is it's only a handful of quotes that stick with me through life but I, I really like this one i like when she said it she was like some women are born from fire and some women burn from it you know what i'm saying and i think it's the same way with men like i think the shit you go through as a man is what makes you like some niggas are literally born from fire some niggas like burn in it bro because i know niggas from high school and shit who just swore they was going to college, was finna do all this shit, and now they on the block, and it's just, that's all they know. Like, I am grateful for the knowledge of being able to see outside of myself and think bigger in life and things of like, things of that nature, but boy, to get to this point, and this coke is good. I have taken a lot of losses from people. I've taken a lot of shit off people, like, just yesterday. And this ain't nothing really new, but it's becoming more apparent. Like, I have a kid. <laughs> and it's becoming more apparent that the shit that's on my kid's end of the situation is a bunch of bullshit. Not saying the kid itself. But it's just, a lot of stuff ain't lining up. A lot of stuff is being told to me, and a lot of stuff is being fabricated, and the more I, because I've I've been gone for eight months, so I was like, I can't be there to look it up and see what it is. But now that I've got back home and had a chance to really dig into it, it's like a lot of this shit is really some bullshit. Like a lot of this shit was shit that was played up to be something that it wasn't. A lot of this shit was lies. It's like motherfuckers just shooting me bullshit just to get money out of me, and it's like, damn, like Monko always tells me that everybody gonna get their karma. You know what I'm saying? And I, I I believe that to a certain extent, but I guess a part of me still wants to kind of dish it out a little bit. So it's like, you know, I almost broke my car door over that shit. Like I was finna go down there and kick a motherfucker dough and all other shit, but it's like, nobody will ever face me straight up. You know what I'm saying? Not saying I'm gonna look for that type of shit, but it's never no man to man. It's never no fair square. It's never none of that shit. Like, it's always the bullshit. It's always a motherfucker doing some dirty ass shit to me. Like, so in the instance of me being grateful for the things that I do have in the position that I am in life, you know, it's crazy on top of that. You can tell anybody else that, you know, they got $13,000 or $14,000, whatever the case may be, right? That they got a couple, they just, they just sitting on some grand. Me is still, you know, when I first had got $20,000, it felt like a lot of money. $13,000, $14,000 does not feel like shit anymore. And I'm not saying I'm gonna go blow it or anything to that nature. It just doesn't feel like it's enough. Like, it's good for now. I, it, it, I feel like $13,000 is good within the span of a month. That's how I feel about it. My perspective on it has completely changed. And it's like, how do you get to a point where you feel whole with what you've done? It's the same, I have the same issue kind of with women. Now, granted, I have women that I love on this earth. You know what I'm saying? And they are, and a lot of girls I, I I have been down with are really, really good to me, and I'm very grateful. But at the same time, for me to get to this point, boy, I had to take some losses, man. Like, i tell you about this one chick specifically. And this won't tell nobody about my business no more, the shit I used to do. I might have been 21. I met this girl when I was in boot camp. Fine as a motherfucker. Looked like Nunu off fucking, um... Looked like Nunu off ATL. <laughs> Fine as shit. 
Went around telling everybody, cause I, I think at the time I wasn't used to dealing with no cute ass chick. Told this shit to my cousin. My cousin ended up being a big mouth while I was on the phone, ended up losing her. You know what I'm saying? I, and, and man, that was eight, nine years ago. Now granted, it don't mean that much like that in the grand scheme of things, but it's more so like, it was a loss that I took because it was a girl I really, really liked. I, I might have actually been with that girl had that not happened. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm one of the people, like, once I like you, I stick to you. Like, once I like you, I really stick to you. Like, if I care for you, I stay. Like, I'm not finna be in a relationship. But listen, if we good, if you good to me, I'll be around you for the rest of your life. You know what I'm saying? But I've taken so many losses when it comes to women. There have been girls I've really been cared, I cared for. There were girls I really thought I saw something with. There were girls I really thought it was going to build something with. And it's like... The more you lose with people in your life, if you survive it, it makes you way more resilient. Cause like, there was like the status I seen on Facebook the other day. And a girl was like, well, niggas don't even wait one whole fucking day until they own talking, like was it? Niggas don't wait two whole days until they talking to some other female. And that stat stuck with me pretty well because I think of it like this, right? How long do you wait to resume your life after someone has decided they don't want to talk to you no more? Like, I can see if I broke up with you and then went and did it, then it's disrespectful. But it's like, a girl breaks up with you, and I'm supposed to just put my whole life on pause because you don't want to be with me no more. I'm supposed to just sit still. Like, no, that's, that's my whole point. Like, you get so used to losing in certain shit. It's like, one, it makes you resilient as fuck. And then two, it makes your pride strong. Like, listen, you keep losing, after a while, even if you do lose, you don't show motherfuckers that you lose. You just get used to it. Like, I am used to getting the short end of the stick. Like, even with these jobs, like, man, like, there have been times where I've been cut short on a job because another motherfucker was, like, the son or the nephew or the motherfucker that put them on the job. It wasn't because he was more skilled than me. Might have been younger than me, might not have known as much. Like, I've had to really work at this nuclear plant shit for it to pop, like, and it's going well, but I'm saying, like, in the instance of, like, the grand scheme of where I see, it could be better. It could be better. Like, it just feels like sometimes I'm always getting the shorter end of the stick in life sometimes. I'm grateful for what I do have, but what I'm saying is, in a nutshell, is that I'm, I'm used to, I, I want a lot more out of it. I want a lot more out of life. Like, there's so much more I could be doing with myself. And quite honestly, I don't think I can settle down with one girl. I don't think I can be with anybody until I feel content with myself. Like, that's not to say I'm not happy. Like, I'm happy as fuck. I love who I am, but it's like, it's never enough. It's never enough. But, you know, the losses that you take in it, and if you stay in it long enough, you eventually get good at it. But, you know, this is me kind of just coming back to YouTube. So I just kind of wanted to do that right quick.